have confirmation for my flight. Nice. Oh, yeah, my you talked to my aunts? Mm -hmm. They everything One see, line. had anxiety take about talking three. to them. It went really well. Take three wrestling podcast. We'll talk after this is over since yeah, we're 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 I don't so know why he's started recording Come now. Like that what what are you I doing with your life? You said you said countdown. You said yeah, countdown. Yeah, but then we started talking. Okay. That's your it's fault. fine. It's fine. Well, well, this is all part of the show. It's fine. Yep, I'm exactly. moving to Florida in two weeks, and I've had three shots of vodka in the last hour. Let's fucking go. Jordy. I have a short friend now again. It's cool. Awesome. Take the rest of the podcast. July Did 1st. You You'll have a short friend again? Plus, I, I got to have a short friend, not, not name my wife. <laughs> Do you not know any other short people? Are you? As short as you are? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Don't even lie. Who? Who else? That's more. Smurgle. Smurgle. Yeah, but I never see her anymore, though. She's three foot tall. I know. I no, missed that. Book. I could tell that she was short because her name started with an S C H. Anytime go. there's a C H in someone's name, anytime there's a C H in someone's name, chances are they're like four foot eight. This is the greatest intro ever in TikTok wrestling history. Yes, let's go. Mike Bernier, Joe Lopez, July first. Hey, it's halftime of twenty twenty one. Yes, yes, it is. And the Patriot passed away. R.I.P. What's his name? Dale Wilkes. Dale, Dale Wilkes. Wilkes. Yeah. Something like R.I.P. Can I can I say it? Is it okay? Yeah. 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 It really kind of sucks that the Patriot died on on July Fourth weekend. Yeah. As you wear an American Nightmare shirt. Yes, right. Cody, this shirt was bought pre him having the first ever mixed race baby. That's what I got out of that promo. Okay, first off, congrats to Brett, Brandy, and Cody. But they're a tad annoying now. That's a bit. No, Why? No, no, they're not. They're not annoying. They're, they're not. Exactly, they're, they're almost as annoying as the Bella Twins, but somehow they're still on our TVs every week with a fucking live series, even though they don't wrestle anymore. I love Brandy and Cody. They're like the epitome of, like, they look like they could have been characters on Gossip Girl. I'm here for it. Speaking of Gossip Girl, where are you at now on the show currently? Oh my god, I'm on season six. I'm almost done before. So the new series, the reboot, premieres on July 8th. And I want to be done with the old one by the time the new one premieres. And I'm probably about 20 episodes away. Well, you know what? I love that for you. I love that for me, too. We got a good show today. We got a good show today. Uh, so Let's AW is back on the road next week. Um, we're going to be there. Mike, myself, at the Wives. Maybe some more. Not we'll see. Me. Oh, you're, you're, too, you're a week to be a week behind. I know. I'm not moving to to your part of the woods until July 15th. Well, yeah. by the time I get there, it'll be like the 17th. So but. we're Right. So we're going to talk about the, the memories of the Daily's Place the last 15 months. Yeah, and then, of course... Memories alone. <laughs> and then, of course, Joe's topic later on will be uh, A.W. Why the fuck I keep... keep why can't I keep these, these name out their mouth? Right. Easy for you to say. But first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> English, motherfucker. Do you speak? That's yes, right. Sorry. It's late, dog. It's late, dog. Anyway. Uh, this man is ever, like, legitimately, yo, but Tony Khan, keep my name out your mouth. Yeah. But first, my topic off the gate. Uh, the WWE just actually wrapped up their top 50 list of tag teams. Um, of course, you should check it out on Peacock. I actually watched the first two parts of it. It's really good. Um, How many episodes cock. is it? It's, I think it's it's its own ep it's its own like thing. There's no like within the documentaries or icons. It's, it's its own little thing they have going. There's not really Joe, no. Joe, give How me many six episodes minutes. is it? This is this five five episodes. Okay. There we go. Give, me, th like give me 30 seconds. I'll tell you exactly how to get there. I'm going oh, okay. to cock up on my TV. 50 to 36, the first episode. 36 I can get the cock 45. up on my TV much quicker. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, Practice. That's what, that's what he said. You said. I you did, did say it. Anyway, so WWE wrapped up their top 50 lists. I want to sit here and spend a, you know, a little bit discussing the list. And I think what I'm going to do, I want to break down a list in tens. Hi Jackson. You say hi you to everybody. What? I won't give you shit for wearing that shirt because they're better than the Yankees, at least. I mean, the Yankees shirt, I have a bigger, a bigger issue with that. And no. and because he's like five and doesn't know about sports teams that well. 
or three. <laughs> or three, we'll whatever. Three. Pick your age, Joe. Pick your age. It's okay. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to break this down by in, te- in groups of 10. 50 going up to one. And see sure. if an issue with the, the grouping. Now, it's kind of funny and fitting that we literally just wrapped up a tag team tournament. The three, yes. uh, take three uh, tag yeah. team tournament, which is the greatest tournament in history of all tournaments. Now, wait, how many teams did we have in our tournament? 32, right, Mike? Uh, 32, right? I believe so. Yeah. How many of those 32 teams made this top 50? Uh, uh, quite a f- I mean, I would say about half, right? Because, I mean, I'm sure, like, the ECW teams we had probably didn't make it. But I will tell you, well, this is WWE, obviously. But I will say this much, though. Looking at this list alone, there's obviously a lot of teams that we missed out on having in the tournament. So I, I would not be against in the future, maybe in, in another fucking galaxy far, far away, doing this tournament again. Uh, so, so hit me with them, because now I'm curious. Let's, let's, what, what, the 50? Yeah, yeah, give me 50 let's go. 40. So let's, let's, right. let's go to 50 to, 50 to 41 right now and break it okay. down. Will you agree with me? Let's Number 50. It. You guessed it. Bushwhackers. You didn't see me doing the uh, thing on the screen. Uh, my, 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 my question was, is which one of us guessed that? Because neither one of us said a word. I thought you were given two hand jobs. I oh, thought you oh, were just oh, like... Oh, thank you. Oh, oh thank you. Right? I mean, thank like, you. Pride month is one. over, buddy. Well, I mean, two birds, one stone. That, I'm gay. I mean, two birds, one stone, Joseph. It's okay. So, yes. I'm kind of mad that he literally was just like, yeah, I can say that I'm gay. All right. Number 49. Too cool. Which, by the way, that's <laughs> no. two teams that were in the uh, tournament. Two teams are now tournament already. All the right, there we go. Number 48, the Quebecers. Number 47, Smoking Guns. 46. So I'm going to say this. Okay. Personally, I the the Quebecers were whatever, but I really prefer the Fabulous Rouge Real Brothers. Me too. But of they, course, they, I, I, I mean, they may be in this. They may be in this. We haven't gotten there yet. Right? Oh, you're right. Right. Number 46, Strike Force, Tito Santana and Rick Martel. Did uh, we have them? Huh? Yes. We have, did we yes, have we did. them? We had them. Yes. 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 So, they were one of those teams where it was like, they were only around for like a year, so. Not even. They yeah. were technically a little over a year, but they were they were literally like, Martel got hurt for a little while. They came was back it? and literally split up after that. And wasn't like Tom Zink supposed to be in that team at one point? It was a Canem connection that, and then they oh. broke up and then. Martel and Santana got together and they won the tag titles like months later. Okay. So, uh, 45, the Hedge Shrinkers. 44, Kane and X Pac. 43, Batista and Ric Flair. So they're just making shit up, is what you're saying? No, 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 no. Batista and Ric Flair were tag champions. Yes, they were. The they were. I mean, so uh, were Stone Cold Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels, but they're not making this list. You don't know that. You don't know that. Do they make this list? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck you if they make yep. this list. The rig is down. Fuck you <laughs> if they make this list. I blame if they, you. If they made this list and they have the Quebecers ranked at 48, I'm going to be very upset. I'm not. You're going to be very upset. <laughs> right now, they're not on the list. Okay. 42 is Eminem. 42 is Eminem. Nah, I killed them with that. Okay. They should be higher. 41. The team that you can't stand, Joe, especially the Nasty Boys. Oh yeah, no, but you know what? In a kayfabe list put out by WWE, the Nasty Boys belong on there, and that's about a good position for them. I'm not yeah. going to disagree with that. Actually, they should they, sh- they should be 49. Right. <laughs> only only the be right after them. No, they were. I mean, for that one year, they were booked like monsters. No, that's the thing. Like, look, I'm not a Nasty Boys fan, right? But I'm not gonna act like Very they weren't nice. one of the main tag teams when I was a kid. They no. were definitely identifiable as one of the main WWE they tag were. teams as a kid. From ninety to ninety one, they were yeah. looked at as the top. I mean, they yeah. beat the top. I mean, they won the tag titles against a, against a top five team in this list for the record, right? On a, that's on a big saying. stage. Like, look, when we did our our tournament, where you're, you know. You're you're basing it on in ring work. You're basing it on title range. You're basing it on all the, whatever we decided to base it on. The nasty boys belong the, on in the list, but didn't belong too far along. Correct. If you're basing it on kayfabe terms, 
and you're basing it in the way WWE does when they make these kinds of documentaries, the Nasty Boys totally belong. I'm totally yeah. okay with yeah. that. Um, <laughs> another thing that stuck out to me here too as well was Strike Force. Back to Strike Force again. I'm surprised they're on this list because again, they weren't together long. They got together late like, '87, won the tag titles almost immediately, yeah. then lost the title five months later at WrestleMania Four against Demolition. Were off of TV for a year because Martel got hurt. Came back literally for WrestleMania Five and broke up that night. But doesn't it say a lot that in the year 2021, we all know who Strike Force is. We all remember them, you know, for better or worse. We might not be able to name any of their matches. You might not be able to say, oh, they had this five-star classic or anything like that. But you know who Strike Force is if someone says, yo, you ever hear Strike Force? And given how little time they actually existed as a tag team, I think it actually says something for their right. longevity that we but do still remember them. Because two of the guy, both guys were pretty well-known singles wrestlers, too. Rick Martel, Tio Santana is a former Intercontinental Champion. I mean, Hall of I Famer. Mean, so, so were the Ultimate Warrior and Sting, but a lot of people don't talk about their tag team. Well, they're not WWE, though. Sure. But, I mean, but I'm saying, even when you talk about tag teams in general, nobody's out there being like, oh, yeah, the fucking Blade Runners were amazing. The only other thing that stuck out for me also on this list, too, this 10, is like, I know we shit on Too Cool, but, dude... <laughs> They were fucking over for a year. They were over at a time where everyone was over. D'Lo Brown was over. Sabio Vega was over. The late 90s were a weird time where everyone could get over in wrestling. All you had to do was, like, maybe something lewd with your hands. Like, just... Right. The worm and all that shit. Yeah, Don't exactly. Know. It's so stupid, but I have no problem with it. Mike, what stood out to you in this uh, <coughs> 10... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Mountie always gets his man. He does. Ernest, I would just like to <coughs> say, if you're going to choke on a dick, you need to hit mute. Too late. Um, I'm on mic. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess but, the other thing that stands out is uh, the lack of love for one Ric Flair and Dave Bautista. <laughs> You think it should be higher than 43? I walk two miles inside this pit of danger. So they lasted, what, one year as a tag team, if that? Well, I mean, Evolution they was were around tag for however long. <laughs> Jackson, stop. You're good, dude. <laughs> so wait, what do we got next? What do we got for okay, 40 next 10. Okay, so 40 through 31. Here we go. Number 40, Rated RKO. Number 39. I don't Low, right? That. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Number 39, a team that made our uh, tournament. Paul London and Brian Kendrick. There we go. I'm proud and of that's, that one. That's low. This that one. Is low. I will give Mucho, you that. That's low. 38, mutual respect here. DIY. Yes. I would probably have next. London. I I would probably have London and Kendrick ahead of them. And I and you're not talking you're talking to probably the biggest Johnny Gargano supporter in the oh, no, world. Oh, no. question. Yeah. Uh Did 37. We did huh? we not have DIY in our tournament? No. How do we miss that? Where that, that was a bad on us for the record. Did we at NXT in our tournament? I don't think we did. I don't think we. I don't think we had anybody. We had like the revival and stuff, or American Alpha. I don't think. I, don't think we, I think we left NXT out of it. Okay. Wow. So I think we could do. We could almost do an entire sixteen team bracket just, just like NXT. NXT. Tag That's not but a bad take, idea. It would take Ernest actually watching. Yeah, have to watch the old shit. But I know yeah. some of them existed back then. Some of them. Uh, 37, the world's greatest tag team. That's, that was, that's uh, really low Don for Richardson that. Don Richardson and some other, other guy's name. I forgot his name. Charlie Haas. Benjamin Haas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's really low for them. 36, this feels low to me. Money, Inc. No. No, that's about oh. right. No, I, mean, I, would have them, I, would probably, I would probably have them lower. Really? Okay. I would have them I mean, lower. I mean, you have London and Kendrick, who were the longest reigning right. SmackDown tag team champions for right. however long. You have DIY, who you know th those guys put on top five matches mm -hmm. every time they were out there. Um, you have, you have Ray RKO. And, yeah, you have Batista and Ric Flair, half of which have been in Marvel movies. <laughs> so, like, obviously, <laughs> there, there's room like to that. Be found. No, no, but I will say, like, like honestly. If you're going to move team, if we're going to sit here and be like, oh, those guys are ranked low, 
then there's got to be some teams that we're going to sit here and be like, those guys are ranked kind of high. And I think this is one of those cases where it's like, I'd rather see DIY up a little bit higher. I'd rather see Brian, uh, okay, Brian and Kendrick. You almost, no. just, said, you almost just said Brian and London and Paul Kendrick. Yes. You literally almost yes. fucking. <laughs> I really did. Yeah, I'd rather have like London dog. and Kendrick up higher. And I'd rather see Money Inc. a little bit lower. Like Money Inc. was a good team. But they weren't an amazing team or anything like that. Like it was a good, it was a good pairing of two gimmicks. You know, you had the rich guy and the IRS guy. Like it, Force, it, in a sense. it also yeah. it also worked. It also worked because Ted was trying to work less in the ring. Right. And IRS IRS could go out there and get thrown around by whoever, and then let right. Ted come in for five or six minutes, and then go back to getting thrown around, <laughs> and then they get a cheap win. Right. All right. Thirty thirty five. Chris Jericho and the Big Show. Stop. Yeah. Uh, 34. <laughs> 34, the natural disasters. I don't 30, hate that. I don't hate it either. 33, the Street Profits. I feel like if we do this again, they'll be in a top 25. And like, say to do another year or two from now, they'll be in top 25. No. You pulled off on the Profits the last year, buddy. They would have, yeah, I'm sorry. They're, they'd have to get pushed like, really really well and now granted <clears throat> i'll give you this we're about to be in front of live crowds again the street profits are great in front of live crowds without question we've seen them mike and i have seen them in front of the full sale crowd more than a few times in person mm -hmm. and we've gotten to see them in bigger arenas and stuff too i think right am i wrong about that like, like, yeah, they, like, they like, like a takeover or something. They won, I feel like they won Raw also too. They won tag titles on Raw too before right. crowd I, away. I, I think they're one of those acts that works really, really well in front of a crowd. So I, I am going to amend what I just said and say that maybe you're right. A year from now, when they've been in front of crowds for like another year, maybe you're right that they will be one of those teams. Right now. They're kind of non-existent. I'm like, I'm not feeling bad about saying no. Okay. They, uh, they, they, they left them off of the WWE uh, WrestleMania card on purpose because the pop would have been fucking banana sandwich. Yeah. All right. 32. Jack and Gerald Briscoe. I can't say I've ever seen a single one of their matches. Uh, the only positive I'll say about this is at least they're in, in, including the <laughs> legacy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, okay. I'll give them I'm gonna say this though, without knowing the rest of the list, <coughs> if they're on there, fucking Rocky Johnson and my boy at the Auburn YMCA, Tony Atlas. Oh, they're there, and they're pretty high. So. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that guy, but like, if they weren't on this list. Then I really don't need to see another video package of them talking about them being the first black tag team right. ever. Right. Amen. Like, that's that's, that's that what I'm saying. Again. Like they Someone better be high it. on this. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be that guy. But right. That's like, the line. I'm, right. I'm already accepting that Billy and Chuck probably aren't th on this list. So at least give me like Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson. Right. Thirty-one, the Bludgeon Brothers, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Okay. Okay. I'm not. I'm not mad at it. You think that's a little low? lower? A little lower. Okay. Wait. Would you put them lower, or do you think that's yes. low for them? No, no, I put them lower. Okay, that makes okay. sense. I, the I agree fact, with the you. Fa the fact, the fact that yes, they were attacking for an extended period of time is a good thing. They were tag champions a couple times, yes. but then there were there were also a lot of that time that they were a team. One of them was hurt. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And so I always kind of felt like, can I be honest too? I felt like the Blungeon Brothers as a gimmick was kind of like they broke them up. You know, they broke them up as, as the Wyatt family, and instead of actually giving them both a chance in singles where they both would have been awesome, as we know, they ended up just putting them back together in a new gimmick as a tag team. I never really liked that that much. Okay, let's go through this list. Number 30, this team I feel like would have been a little higher if they stayed together longer. The British Bulldog and Owen Hart. Yeah, I guess. Uh, 29, I actually like this. John Morrison, The Miz. Yeah, that's Point fair. Nine. I think that makes sense. I mean, more based on their run when they were first a team right. than like their more recent run, but I don't hate it. But I don't hate the, le the late one, too. To be honest. Mike doesn't seem to like it that much. A little too low? High? What? Uh, I think they need to be further up the list. Oh, okay. There you go. 
Uh, I'm just trying. I'm, I mean, I'm just mentally like, I don't actually know the list. So I'm getting this revealed like as he's talking about it. I haven't, I haven't sat through those shows. So I'm literally like, okay, who are the 27 teams that I can see above them? Because it's one of those where it's like, okay, if it's this team, I understand. If it's this team, I understand. But then I'm like, well, if it's this team, there's no chance in hell. <sighs> The only thing that I know is I saw the top five of this list on social media, and I really can't wait till we get there because I think that's going to be an interesting conversation. The top five I actually agree with. The order I, I might tweak. Let's just, let's just we'll get, get there. Let's we'll get, get there. The rest we'll, get there. we'll get there. Uh, you guys are me on this one. Uh, 28, The Bar. Who are they? Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. Okay. I didn't know that. Wait, we wait, are The Bar. This one started watching? No, they broke up right before he started watching them together. Oh, yeah, they, they were together when I started watching them. They actually them. were a great fucking tag team. Like, I wanna, they, it started, they, they, it started as a feud. Literally it started as a feud. It started as a feud. Famous's career. Rejuvenated? Did I say rejuvenated? Probably. You could. I w- I'll say this. It started as a feud, and everyone's like, well, what the fuck is Seamus going to do? And then all of a sudden, they had a really good feud. And they're like, why are we kicking each other's asses when we can kick everybody else's asses? Yep. And. They are the bar. Did you say in the accent? That's cool. Uh, we are the bar. Number 27, Team Hell No. Who's that? Sure. Wait, what? Team Hell No. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Stop bullshitting me right no, now. No, I'm being serious. With that dumbass look on your face. Stop bullshitting me. No, I'm being serious. All right, I'm done with this podcast for the night. I can't with this motherfucker. Tonight. How the fuck did you not know about fucking Kane and Daniel Bryan? What the fuck is wrong with him? I didn't Wait, watch. They were together. Did you know who they were? No, no, no. I knew they were a team. They didn't know their name, Team Hell No. I did not know that. Did you not see that moronic look on his face where he looked like he saw the fucking uh, beeper light from Men in Black where he was just like... No, I, I did not know the name of the team was Team Hell No. Have, have you Even never, have you ever seen any of their matches? I saw some of the matches. They were the 2011, 2012, right? 2013. Yeah, yeah. My, hold on. But my I didn't know their name was Team Hell No. My three-year-old son... My three-year-old son just laughed at you the fact that you didn't know that they were Team Hell No. What the fuck's wrong with you? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good Lord. You know uh, that their therapist was Scorpio Sky? True story. Mm. Uh, 26. He was one of them. I actually agree with this. You're going to think I'm crazy. Number 26. Nikolai Volkov and Iron Sheik. This isn't the reason why we're going to think you're crazy, but continue. Okay. Number 25. Los Guerreros. Oh, did we leave them off of ours? I think they so. make our list. No. I, yeah. Wow. That's a big miss for us. I'm going to give WWE credit for that one. I think that was one of those where I kind of took some teams for granted whenever I made my list trying to give yeah. some easy ones. And he found a way to miss those. Yeah. Los Guerreros. I'm one the one guy of- that, that brought in Powers of Pain. and <laughs> Yeah, exactly. They- they were one of the main staples of like the SmackDown Six when that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, Ernest, 20, yeah, twenty-four. He doesn't know yes. what the SmackDown Six yes. are. No fucking. I've chance. heard before. Name them. Fucking. Name the six. I don't know. Name the SmackDown Six. Brock Lesnar. No, shut up. You're done already. Michael. Right Michael. Failed. Tito. Uh, Lorraine. Leroy. Uh, Jeremiah and Jamal <laughs> Jackson. Yeah. And Janet, but Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. That's right. Uh, 24. The APA. Feels low. No, no, that's, that's, no that's probably that's right high. for them. No, I would say that's right for them. Because their thing was, is they they didn't need to be tag champions. Theirs was the gimmick. There was a True. lot of stuff that they did that was like the backstage stuff and being paid to beat people's asses and protect people. Like, their thing was the gimmick. It wasn't necessarily the matches. And I think that's why I'm... I, I'm I'm gonna give you that one because I would say, and this I don't need, I don't feel like this is a hot take, but y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. Ron Simmons, who was literally the first ever black man to wear the NWA world title, the first ever African American to wear the NWA world title. I would say his most famous stint in pro wrestling was in the APA. I agree. More people know him. For the APA than they do for being the first African American to be world champion. Right. Facts. Yeah. Uh, twenty three. The Blackjacks. Like like Mulligan and. That's got to be Mulligan. I'm assuming so. That's got to be Mulligan. Originals. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be. 
22. Again, those are, that's one of those teams I can't say I've ever seen a single one of their matches, but sure. But here, so hearing about their career, I think you kind of have to. Yeah. I may be wrong here because I didn't watch the era of this era, but based on the legacy, it feels low to me. Maybe you can t- tell me something different. 22, the Shield. No, I'm okay with it. So the only reason I'm not okay with it is because of who ranks higher later in the list, but I'll leave it okay, at that. We'll get there. Yeah. This feels And I'll low explain too. why when we get there. This well, it, this this feels low, except they weren't I mean, I guess they were attacking in the back half, the second installment. Twenty one's DX with Shawn Michaels and Triple H. No, that doesn't even belong on this list. They weren't a tag team. They were they were, they, were they on the second stint? A Shawn Michaels they were, they were, yeah, the, yeah, they were attacking yeah. at, the ta- at the tail end. Okay, you're right. Yeah, right. They're like 2000, what? 2008. Seven, eight, but, but, they're, but, they're, but they're one of those teams that's in kind of for the same reason that the APA was in. The beginning of their run was more the stuff that they did together and the skits and all of that. Yeah. And then it was like the tag matches at the end. But if we're going solely, and, and I'm going to just say based on solely like tag team wrestling, like, You've got teams like DIY and the Bludgeon Brothers and yep. Miz and Morrison that are in like the 30s and 40s, and you have a team that is like best known for shoving like Shane McMahon's head up fucking Big Show's ass inside of Hell in a Cell. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't. They're all, they're only there because their DX and WWE made this list. I like this number 20. Number 20, Dennis Video Era. I don't. Too high. I don't, that's another one where I don't feel like like give me Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly as the team, and that's still too high for them. But give well, me you that. Gotta, you got to you got to remember they're going to lump all of them together because when Bobby blew out his ACL and Roddy took over for him. Yeah, okay, probably those. I don't two, like. Right? Am I wrong? And maybe this is just a me thing, and you guys could disagree with me. I don't like how this list take stables and acts like they're tag teams. I don't I don't hate it probably as much as you do. Only okay. from the sole only from the sole reason of when it was the shield, you had all of them tagged together separately. Like right. You had a you had a Roman and a Dean, a Roman and a Seth, a Seth and a Dean. With, with the undisputed era, you have a Kyle and, and Fish, a yes. Kyle and Roddy. Right. You never really had Adam in a tag team, but that was because Adam no. was like the, the main but, guy. But Adam Adam did technically win the tag titles with Kyle before they used the free but, bird rule after Bobby blew his knee out. Right. But see, to me, those are all different teams. Like, yes, they're all under the umbrella of the same faction, but they're different teams. I wouldn't I wouldn't rate those teams together because then you run into the like look, Red Dragon, O'Reilly and Fish are a amazing tag team. They are one of the best tag teams that ever existed in Ring of Honor. They're one of the best tag teams that ever ran through the indie scene during the 2000s. They were one of the best tag teams in NXT. I don't think it's fair to give Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly's like 20 matches together as a tag team that much credit because Fish and O'Reilly are one of the greatest teams. Well, then I think you have to take it with a grain of salt because there's going to be a group coming yeah. up that I know yes. is going to fuck it, that deserves to be in there as a group because of the matches that they've had together. So, all right, number nineteen, we'll Joe's for you, Rocky Johnson, and Tony Atlas, number nineteen. <laughs> there we go. I don't I'm hate gonna, it. I don't hate when it. When I see when I see Tony at the gym tomorrow, I'm gonna let him know he was number nineteen on this list. <laughs> number eighteen. What he says to about what he says right. about yeah. See. Number eighteen, Professor Turo Tanaka and Mister Fuji. I, yeah, like the legacy part of it is really cool, but I can't say I've ever seen a single one of their matches. But it makes you want to go back and maybe check it now that it's so high. Why is it, it so really high? It doesn't because that style, style of wrestling. Gato, Mr. Style of wrestling. <laughs> Number 17, people will say this feels low, but, cause, but they were not utilized hey, Mike, well in WWE. Mike, you know who this is. He's talking about you. Mm. Number 17, this is properly rated, to be honest with you. Had they had the career in, in WWE that had in WCW, they'd be in the top 10, maybe top 5. Wait, it's not, wait. It's not the brothers. It's not the brothers. It's not the brothers. Okay. 17. But wait, mm-hmm. is this just a WWE yes. list? Yes, it is. WWE list, yes. So as a WWE list, the Steiners do not belong that high. Yeah. They're I, running I, I, WWE. I can argue that, yeah. 
Their run in the in the early '90s in WWF was nothing to actually write home about. I agree with their you. their legacy comes from WCW one and the NWA. No, I think it was just WCW. They uh, they're like the tail end of the NWA. I they think. were like, real they tail were, end. Yeah, they were. They're, they had a their soft legacy one year there. And, right, number sixteen. This is probably because of the gimmick and all that. The Rock and Sock connection with Mick Foley and The Rock, of course. It was fun, but it, if you're talking about, but is it disrespect to DIYs of the world? And you said the Bludgeon Brothers, it's a disrespect. I'm starting to get mad that Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels aren't on the list. If you're going to give me the fucking rock and sock connection. Right. Okay, hold on. 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 I want a small spoiler alert. You can look at the rest of the list and tell me. Tell me is, the two man, is the two man power trip on this list? Is Steve Austin no. Triple H on this list? No. It's you because the stupid, rock and, you give me you give me the stupid ass rock and sock connection. You give me fucking strike force, but you don't give me the two man power trip. It's because number it? one, it's because number one, I can guarantee you, number one, because the rock and sock connection existed during the Attitude Era, so of course it's going to get more credit. Right. Number two, if Triple H hadn't got injured when he did, I think the two man power trip might have actually had a little bit more longevity. This is post WrestleMania, uh, uh, yes, right? Okay. Yes. Garbage. Okay. Number 15, the Wow Samoans. All right, Legacy Awards. Legacy. Legacy. Shawn Michaels, Marginetti, the Rockers. Nope. <clears throat> Too high? Too, Too high. Low. Okay. Get Number 13. Get them out of here. I piss you guys off. And honestly, this is my favorite team of all time. And yet, they don't, they, this is too high. Art Foundation? Oh. No. Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Mega Powers. Stop. Way too, way too they never did high. anything as a tag team. They literally they were had only a, They were they, only they, a tag team for storyline purposes so they, that they, they could have a title match. They did a couple of things as tag teams. They, like, knocked Akeem out of the ring through the middle no. rope. Like, they no. literally had three matches together. Okay. They did Stop. Some tag really? Teams. Can, I, can I explain what they did as tag Go right teams? Go ahead. They gangbanged Miss Elizabeth. Okay. Did multiple eight balls of cocaine. Yeah. I believe you may on that may, may or may not have shot steroid in each other's asses. Probably did that. And probably held up Vince McMahon for more money. They have more fucking tag team victories than half the team on this list. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe the Elizabeth one. Macho was too too protective to have a three-way first, with her. First you need to know, brother, if you give me some cocaine, anything's on the table. Mega, yeah, the mega powers. Uh... They have three matches. Now, granted, it's not including, house, not including Look, house shows. I'm going to tell you, first of all, 1988, Blue Chew did not exist. Viagra was not around yet. If those men were doing as much cocaine to do those good promos as they could, they were not getting their dicks hard to fuck Elizabeth. I promise you that. <laughs> Number 12, the Valiant Brothers. Who? The Valiant Jimmy, Brothers. Jimmy, Jimmy and what's his name? Yeah, Legacy. Jay? Legacy. Legacy, <laughs> not legacy award. Number Jimmy 11. MJ Valiant? Number 11? I'm surprised they're even on this list considering their, their problems have been. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're starting off with, I'm surprised this team is even on the list. They're number 11. 11. Considering the issues with Vince. Demolition. What issues with Vince? The parent, they're not in the Hall of Fame. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you recognize that. A lot of people aren't in the Hall of Fame. What's your point? Well, they there's a lot of issues between Vince and, and uh but I, think, I think I think I think I've, I think I've never heard the, I think they're on that lawsuit trying to fucking sue McMahon. I think their names are attached to that fucking Which like, lawsuit, like the questions and shit. The, yeah, the class action bullshit. Okay. I think they're right. I think their names are on that, and I think that's that kind is, of what like, he's I've never to. heard any uh, issues between them and McMahon. I so I know that. Argue just for argument's sake. Maybe they're well placed here. But I can make a case on me even a little bit higher. No. No, I think, think 11 is a good place for them. I think they're fine where they're at, and I don't even know who the top 10 are, but I'm going to tell you right now that I don't yeah. know that there's a team that I could realistically say, like just randomly reeling off teams in my head. Hardys, Edge and Christian, Dudleys, Usos, New Day, Heart, uh, Heart Foundation. Good. What I'm saying is I'm listing those teams not knowing that they're if they're on the, in the top 10 or not, and I'm saying – 
I can't put them ahead of those seven tag teams that I just reeled off off the top of my head but in I like th- three seconds. But I do think like 11, like anywhere between 11 and 15 is a good place for them. Yes, I agree. All right, top 10. I'm just going to bolt these off. Okay, we'll just run us off top 10 and we'll debate it. Okay. Do it you same bolt style. Do it in two seconds. Okay. He's a runner. Number He's 10. a track star. It's already done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> number 10, British Bulldogs. Number nine, the Brothers yeah. of Destruction. Number eight, the New Age Outlaws. Wait, number wait, seven, wait, wait, what, wait, what, wait, what, wait, what, what, what? Wait. Okay. Did you just say Kane and the Undertaker were number nine? Correct. Like as a tag team? Correct. Okay. <laughs> Next. So let me ask you a question. As you, as you say that, would you switch out demolition for them? Yes. Okay. No. Really? No, I would put fucking uh, the Rockers. somebody that was in like like no fuck off. <laughs> they were awful. They weren't what? awful. Stop. They were awful. I have more tag team title victories than they do. I have the title belt to prove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you didn't. But it, you, it, what you did not do is inspire an entire generation of AEW tag teams to slap their thighs as the Rockers. Rockers. I also didn't do so much cocaine and throw my best friend through a barbershop window, but I mean, what the fuck? Oh, I mean, I mean that guy ended up becoming the, already the greatest wrestler in history to look business. Yeah, you're right, he did, and, and his left eye is going one way and his right eye is going the other way now. Damn. That's true. What the fuck? All right, number seven, the Usos. Number six, the Legion I'm of out. Doom. I'm out. Okay. Wait, what's wrong with the Usos at seven? That's too low, actually. That's too high? Uh, the fact that Legion of Doom is fucking ranked above them is hot trash. I totally agree with you, hundred percent. I agree 100%. with that. Hundred percent. In fact, I could make a case of demolition be ahead of them also too. Stop. I guess I could. Uh, stop. The, the web. Demolition of course, Mark I boy. Uh, demolition. Now, Mark. Legion of Doom, even in WWF terms only, had a longer longevity and a longer run. Demolition existed for what did we say? Like four years. Yeah. Legion of Doom yeah. was around. In the early 90s, and then again, randomly in like the mid 90s, and then the late 90s, and then Hawk fell off the stage. True, but I would say Demolition for those four years, I would say three of them, they were the tippy top of that. Division. I agree. And that's the case I'm making for Demolition. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, here we go. Number, here's top five. And I, I'll say this once again. I think they got it right with the five. You're I wrong. We can debate. Five, Dully Boys. Four, Edging Christian. Three, The Heart Foundation. Two, The Hardy Boys. And one. You know what it is. Come on. New Day. I want you to say it. I want you to chant New Day. New Day does not belong at number one. And that's my problem with this list. <clears throat> okay. Case so let me, let me just say this real quick. Okay. So I haven't watched. They're not a tag team. They're a stable. I'm no, no, sorry. Right. They're not a tag team. They're a stable. Here's a case I'll make for them as someone that's fresher coming into watching their their run. Okay, I didn't watch. I say about three quarters of of their run from two, 2014 to now. Sure. But I knew, but I knew who they were. Uh, longevity alone is going to make a, make a case for them. Forget the amount of titles they have. They what eleven titles now? Eleven. If 10? look. If you were telling me this was a list of the top stables in WWF history and you told me that New Day was at number one, I would sit here and be like, I fucking love it. They belong there. They are easily the most successful stable in WWE history that has stayed together all this time. Even now, like that they're on separate shows, they're still kind of a stable. It's really relevant. Yeah. No, so I agree. If this was a stables conversation, I agree. They're not a tag team to me. I'm sorry. They're not a tag team to me. But they're top five, definitely, right? And they've been eight time tag team champions. So what the fuck do I know? But they're not a tag uh, team. To they've, me. Been, they've been they've been they've been more than eight time tag team champions. So they're okay. They're, they're, they're like they're like ten or eleven now. Yeah. Um yeah. let me just say this real quick also. Our tournament, we got it right. We got I it mean, right. Dolly boys, I mean, we I, got I, it right. Yeah, I'm not. I don't well, think. Well, hold on, have... hold on, hold on. We got it right, but WWE also got it right. New day. Okay. Because here's the thing: we took into account what the Dudley boys did in ECW, something that was yes. not counted on the list. 
Good point. Correct. A lot of a lot of a good portion of the Dudley's title runs and tag team matches that were yep. most notably known were, was their time in WW or in ECW. Now they came over to WWE and they had a fucking hell of a TLC match or two with Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys. Cool story, bro. But it looked from from my perspective, what was the what was the five again? Okay, top five, five to one: Dudley Boys, mm-hmm. Edge and Christian, Heart Foundation, uh, the Hardys, and the New Day. Okay, the fact that the New Age Outlaws and the Usos aren't anywhere near that fucking conversation is hot garbage. Okay. Wait, 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 so, wait, 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 Joe, real quick. Where were the so, New Mike, Age Outlaws? Joe, real quick, real quick. They were Joe. like seven. Joe, eight. real quick, Mike. So you're fi- you have a problem with the five? Yes. Who are you taking out of the five and put it in there right now? I am taking I am taking the Hardy Boys out. I'm taking Edge and Christian out. Okay. Really? Yes. Oh no, I would keep both of those in there. I like that. I keep yeah, Hardys yeah, but you have to remember. Division. You have to remember you have you have three tag teams from the mid nineties. You have nobody from the two thousands, uh, the mid two thousands. You have nobody from the early eighties, exception of the the Hart Foundation. At the end of the day, who was the best known tag team in that entire Attitude Era? It wasn't the Hardy Boys. It wasn't Edge and Christian. It wasn't the Dudley Boys. It was the guys that came out and said, "Oh, you didn't know." Yeah. You're asking me to call right. somebody. I was, I was the gonna get there. The fucking, I was gonna get there. Top fucking five. It's kind of hot. It's kind of hot. I don't watch. know if they're top five. I do know that where they're at's low. How do you? How do you? I like, okay. Wait, wait. wait. So I will say. I will say this. I will say this. I agree with Ernest. I don't. I wouldn't put the New Age Outlaws in the top five. However, I do see your point. About those three teams, Edge and Christian, the Dudleys, and the Hardys all being top five, being a little BS. I would I mean, put it's... one of them, probably the Dudleys, into like sixth or seventh, and I'd put the Usos in the top five. I think if you're going to have the New Day at number one, their greatest rivals, the only other tag team to make it as big as they have in the last decade in WWE, are the Usos. I think you get them into the same stratosphere. My my top five are in order: New Day, Dudleys, Heart Foundation, Usos, New Age Outlaws. Do we so agree? Heart Foundation in top five? Do we all agree? Wait, 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 top wait, five wait. Tag team. I got a question though. Question: mm-hmm. What is the highest ranking tag team from the early nineties? Early or the eight. Our foundation. Our foundation, technically. Which Our was foundation. at like number what, eight? Three. No, three. They're number oh, three. Oh, they were at three. Okay. Okay. I apparently wasn't paying attention. That's okay. Yeah, uh, WWE's top five was the New Day, the Dudleys, the Hart Foundation, Hardys, Edge and Christian. Let me say this one again. Their top. Not in that eight. order. Forget the right. order. Their top eight is correct. Their eight, lock them in, tier one. That's correct. Those are the who is, who is, who is who is six, seven, eight? The Usos. Uh, six is Legion of Doom. Seven is Usos. Eight New Age Outlaws. Okay, I can I can agree with that. I'm not I'm not as upset with that. So if you, this is in tiers, tier one goes to one through eight. Yeah, I can I can agree with that because you could put the eight of them in any order you really wanted to, right. and it not be wrong. New like Day. I said, to me, the the only the biggest thing with the New Day is I just don't feel like I. And this might be just me. Like I said, I look, they've see, been 11-time tag team champions, so the fuck do I know? I but I feel see, like the problem, the problem is, the problem is, Joe, here's the thing you have to remember. You take them and you make them two separate tag teams, both of them are making this list. And you're not giving recognition to other people. You're not giving True. recognition to the Bushwhackers, to the Strike Forces, to the, right. even to extent to the DIYs of the world. You know, they right. may not even get invo- involved in this list if you have to break up Kofi and Woods and Kofi and... And uh, Kofi and E and E and Woods and and it just becomes so much of a clusterfuck yeah. that it's like I'd almost them lump them and per se the undisputed era together and just may, maybe not rank the undisputed era as high because it's like right. the only reason why it wasn't just fishing O'Reilly for however long is because Bobby blew his knee out. Yeah. Um, so it's like one of those things where it's like that's why I said when we were talking about them it's like I feel like there's got to be like that silver lining like two different three different New Day tag teams could all make this list. You're right. And it's like there's a lot of teams that made this list that it's like, oh, it's cool that they're recognized as like one of the best 50 tag teams in WWE history. But now we have to break up this team into three different teams, and now we're lo- we're losing right teams off this list. Like if you told me right now, like, hey, this week 
your 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 work to do or whatever before our next show is to take the 50 teams and put them in your order just those 50 teams like i would do it but if you tell me that then i have to split up the new day i have to split up the shield i have right, to split right. up the undisputed era i'm telling you straight up bushwhackers gone money inc gone strike force gone like there are teams that will not be here if you tell me i need to break them up and it's not because i don't think they were great for the era that they were in i think that Kofi, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods and Xavier Woods and Big E were better than Strike Force and right. Money Inc. Can I ask the question that we're all thinking before we move on to the next topic? Okay. Where are the Killer Bees? Who cares? The same place that the fabulous Rougeos are. Be blind, Fuck Blair. this list. Be Fuck blind, this Blair. list in the state of Killer Bees. Fucking Iron Sheik hates Be Brian, Brian Blair. Be Brian Blair belongs on this list. Iron Sheik hates Brian Blair. Be Brian Blair, you cocksucker. I'm sorry, Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov on this list is bullshit. No. They were... No, they, I mean, they were not the killer bees. Okay, maybe they were high, but they, they, they served a purpose in the 80s. Okay, they sort of made let's, a let's be real. Let's be real, and, and this, this is where I leave this. Okay. We have the Rock and Sock Connection. Right. We have the Mega Powers. Yeah. We have DX. Yep. We have the Rockers. Whoa, 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 stop. Don't do the Rockers. You know, you, you don't even know where the fuck I'm going with this, smartass. Shut the fuck up and host this show. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. All right, go. Where the fuck is Shawn Michaels and Diesel at? Okay, wait. I have a real I have question. I go so far as saying that they're more deserving than fucking DX. I have, I have a question. They are more deserving than DX. I agree with you 100% on that. Yes. That's I have point, a question Mike. before we move on to the next topic. Okay. How do you guys feel about the fact that they didn't include women's tag teams in this list at all? I don't hate it. You can't do that. I don't either. hate it. I mean, I think if okay. you did this, I think if you did this in five years, yeah, you may, you may have more legs to stand on. Like yes, right yes. now, like realistically, like like who like who would you put in? Sasha and Bailey and the Bella Twins. That is and it. Maybe like the Jumping Bomb Angels, really low well, on the list. Yeah. Okay. So number fifty. So you're taking the Bushwhackers yeah. out and you're putting them. Yeah. In. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's fair. It's, it's, no, 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 no. That's, a, that's, a, that's a valid point. That's what I'm just saying. Like, like they're the people that came to my mind more than anything else where I was like, yo, but like legacy, like maybe give them like a spot somewhere on it. But they I mean, you keep, say, you keep saying all. legacy. I think you're talking about Cody Rhodes and fucking Ted DiBiase. Right. Like, what the fuck are you? Like, why are you bringing I mean, them up? I've seen here? them on the list of fucking DX. I'm just saying. Yeah. All right. Like I said, I, I think the best way to do this is to do it in tears. So that's a, but I agree with Mike. Yeah. Like, like a wedding cake. But the rockers, just as, long as you, just as long as you don't pet the, uh, the, the the cake topper. Look, some of us were drunk. Hey, where's some, oh one more one more question? Some, where's Twin Towers at? Who? Twin Towers. They're they're where, where they need to be. Fucking in Slick's fucking basement somewhere in fucking Bow Funk, Alabama. Bull 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 the Twin Towers. Boss Man and Akeem, genius. Oh. At least. Did they have less 40. matches than the Mega Powers? Because they had matches. They were. Animal. Kind of over in the eighty nine. Oh, didn't they have the tag titles for like a month? No, never had it. Never had it. Demolition yeah. owned that shit for a good over a year. Dude, you know, Demolition's title run blends together, kind of like uh, you know, oh, get out, ball. No, nope. then you out. Uh, their their title run blends together like I blend smoothies. And, and it's on gone. that no. Yeah, speaking of transitions, next topic. Let's go to Mike. Mike's topic is uh, actually no 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 no. Let's go to Joe. I think Joe's topic is more apropos for a second. Sure. And it was transitioned to the mics. Your topic. And it, I'm gonna introduce it like it's mine. You, you you do know that this guy said in a text message that he's gonna tighten up the ship because he's the host, which is a transition from your topic to my topic to your topic, all at the same time. Yeah. It's tightening the screws, Mike, man. What was your topic? What, what did I tell you about? Hey, who the fuck is this guy? Who the fuck is this? You ain't gonna try me. What the fuck do you mean, dog? <laughs> All uh, right, my so topic, I'll, or your topic, I'll make this easy. No, oh, Joe's topic. Seriously, I think it's a better transition. I'll, I'll yeah, make this easy. Okay. So, recently, in the last like week or so, uh, after the Saturday night dynamite that was on TNT, it's on TNT. I watched it on my DVR. I don't know. But anyway, is that a question? yes. So Dynamite was on Saturday night about a week, like a couple of days ago. And at the, at the end of the show, in front of the live crowd, 
Eddie Kingston grabs the mic, cuts a promo, talks about apparently how something about WWE, throws some shade at them. I don't remember the exact wording. I don't really care that much. But whatever he said was enough to garner a reaction off of someone who we just talked about on the list. He was a top five, a member of one of the top five tag teams, and that's Bully Ray. On his podcast, on his uh, XM serious radio show, Busted Busted Open. Open. Yes. They, which is a really good show. I've listened to it a couple of times. Really entertaining. He went on there and went out and said, hey, Eddie Kingston, stay in your lane. Don't talk about WWE. Don't be out there doing that. It's Bush League. Stay in your lane. Talk about AEW. Talk about your company. Just get yourselves over. Don't talk about the other guys. And I guess the question here is, how do you guys feel about that? Do you guys think Bully Ray was right? Do you think AEW spends a little bit too much time taking shots at WWE? Do you think other wrestling companies do that? Because here's one thing. I did see a couple of tweets that pointed out how Bully Ray might be not the best person to be pointing out that someone shouldn't be taking shots at WWE since he built his fame on a company that did nothing but take shots shots at WWE. Right. So let me start. Let me start. They took they took took more shots at WCW than they did WWE. Yeah. Because at some point WWE had Eric stuff and everything. At some point, yeah. I mean, they were tagging on the start, payroll there at some point. So I think right, that six, they they a little a, bit more. That's a little bit more work but shoot. Six, but yeah. it, the no. shit with WCW was more like, hey, true, fuck true. those guys. Yeah, you're right. But for our listeners, for context, let me let me read quickly the quote um, from Bully sure. Ray to Eddie Kingston. This for context, real <laughs> quick. Okay, he says, "Quote: I love Eddie Kingston to death. If we were having promo wars and I was a captain of the team, and somebody says you get to pick one person to do the promo for you." I would most likely pick Eddie because of his believability, tone, inflection, everything about him. But in this case, Eddie needs to shut the fuck up and stay in his lane. And his lane, of course, is an AEW guy speaking about AEW and flying the flag at AEW. Then I'm completely on board. Tell me how great AEW is. Fly the flag of your company. Show me that you wear the heart on your sleeve. Okay. I agree with him 100%. Even though he, you said that Bully Ray has a history of doing this shit, you know, you know, kettle, you know, uh, my big, one well, my biggest problems with AEW in general, and you know, my AEW mark is yeah. them not focusing. Was that? What? Didn't no, I didn't hear what you said. You didn't need to just keep going. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll AEW, hear it back when you listen to the show. It's fine. Right. AEW does not keep their focus on the ball. Okay. Stop worrying about Vince, Triple H, Stephanie, Fucking W just stop worrying about WWE. Work on your shit. You have there's a lot of holes in your product still you need to fill up. Okay. Production problems and all that. Remember the fucking the the spot with Jericho falling off the cage, for example, production error. Shit like that. You need to worry about yourself. What about your product? You're not going to be WWE at this point. Okay. Maybe in 10, 15 years in another world far, far away when Vince sells the company, maybe if you guys are still in business, maybe you have a chance. But Enough of the fucking shots, dude. It's it's to me it's just corny. That's the problem. To me, it's corny. You know, so here's my thing too. Sometimes I wonder how many things are actually like shots at WWE. Like, I mean, look, there's the obvious ones. There's Cody coming out and hitting the fucking uh hitting I, the fucking throne with the sledgehammer. Right. Yeah. Obvious what that's going for. But, like, you see how, like, people this week were making reference to, like, Kenny Omega's facial hair on Dynamite, what, like, last night? Where it kind of looks like 2005 Circuit Triple H. Now, here's my thing. That could just be ironic. Or, given how much the guys in AEW are very clearly wrestling fans to the level that we are... Am I necessarily going to be shocked if Kenny Omega was backstage talking and like Nick Jackson and being like, <laughs> look at me. I look like Triple H in 2005. The audience is going to eat this up. I'm not shocked by that if that's the reality. Because these guys are wrestling <laughs> fans. I've had, look, the Young Bucks were at a Chikara, at like a King of Trios once. And I know we don't like to talk about Chikara, but whatever. They were at a King of Trios once. And I was there. 
and and one of my friends was taking a photo with them. Was it you, Mike? You were there that weekend, weren't you? Uh, it may have, it may have been. Was it Parker? Or was it Kevin? It was someone. But you were there that weekend. That was I the was. one that was there with Wiggy and Kevin and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When everything went down. Yes. So like, but that weekend, like, I remember being by their merch table and saying something because Tatanka was there. That's yeah. right. All the fucking Tatanka was there, and I was geeking out because <laughs> I was. <laughs> yes. I was just like, holy shit, Tatunk is like five feet away from me and I really just want to go say hi. And I have a photo with him and it's the most amazing thing ever. I'm such a dork. Anyway, I remember saying though, next to the Young Bucks, like standing there in front of the Young Bucks and Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. They were also mm -hmm. like all at the mm -hmm. same table. I remember saying to them, oh my God, I'm such a dork. I really just want to go meet Tatanka. And I remember one of them, I think it was one of the young bucks being like, yeah, dude, we're all wrestling dorks. Like, we're all fans. Get over it kind of thing. Because, like, fuck those guys. But, like, I remember that interaction. And the truth is, like, that is what they are. Like, look, I'm sorry. But the fucking young bucks came on Dynamite last night, had a great fucking match. That match was amazing. But they looked like Shawn Michaels for a reason. These guys reference this shit for a reason. They're fans like we are. So I'm not surprised if they're working in these, like, Easter eggs and references and stuff like that. But at what point is it too much? Like, at what point I will is it say, like, no, <clears throat> but you guys are just doing this because, like, we all saw it in the 90s. Or I, will, something. I will say in the case of the Bucks, though, especially for the Bucks, because everyone shits on them anyway. That it is fucking doing it is to piss people off. They know to piss oh, everybody yeah, off. 100%. They're getting so, heel heat. 100%. Yeah, real fucking heat. Yes. Agreed. Michael? Uh, Alright, number one. The last three companies that have really decided to go after other companies on a major scale have all ended up fucking closing. Yeah. WCW, gone. ECW, gone. Uh, didn't I think Memphis back in the '80s tried to go after Vince too? Gone. That's my point here. Maybe it is better for you to fly the flag of your own company. But right. here's the thing: I'm not mad at Eddie Kingston. Okay. I love Eddie Kingston. I love Eddie Kingston because that's the way that Eddie Kingston's always been. Yes. Eddie Kingston ain't changing for a motherfucker, and it don't matter who tells him to stay his lane. If Eddie feels his way about something. Eddie's going to tell you how he feels. That's been Eddie since he was in Ring of Honor. That's been Eddie since he's been in Chikara. IWA yep. Mid-South. Don't matter. That's the War King. So Bully Ray telling him to stay his lane? Cool. Telling him to worry about his own shit? Cool. But at the end of the day, Eddie Kingston ain't the one that's doing the production shit. Eddie Kingston ain't the one that's out there fucking making these decisions to dress up like fucking cool. Hulk Hogan and the that's Rockers true. and fucking trying to be fucking cheesy ass heels. Eddie Kingston is doing Eddie Kingston things. And at the end of the fucking day, in an industry where everyone kisses each other's asses to get fucking title pushes and wins and character fucking builds, matter of fact, Eddie Kingston's been the same motherfucker from day one. I respect Eddie Kingston more for that because that is what it's about. Didn't Eddie, Eddie Kingston, Kingston work at WWE? He tried, out, WWE he tried out for WWE. Okay. He tried out for WWE. He did. Didn't sign him. Right. But at the end, but at the end of the day, like that's the thing. Eddie isn't mad that he didn't get signed. Eddie's just being Eddie. And that's that's what that, that's what I take away from this. And that's the thing. The raw emotion of Eddie Kingston, the human being, like that's the guy I want behind me going to war every time. And him sitting there saying, you know, like, oh, you know, they're stupid and this and all, and all the shit that and whatever he said. Take it with a grain of salt. But he's also trying to fire up his own guys because they're going on tour in like a week, five days. Yeah. We gonna be there, but but maybe maybe this is an approach that no one's thinking about. Maybe this is Eddie knowing that the people are listening backstage and knowing that we're getting back in front of different fans. They've been in front of fans for the last however long. But here's the thing: in the back of everyone's head, WWE is gonna start touring again, and they're, yeah. they're gonna be filled. People are not gonna not go because it's WWE, and not AEW. Like, let's fucking be real. Right. We've been locked inside of our houses basically for a year and a half. I don't care if it's WWE. Uh, NWA, Impact, fucking AEW, uh, your mom's podunk fucking wrestling fucking company. 
if there's a fucking wrestling show that I think I can go to right now, I'm probably going to fucking try my best to go to it. Because at the end of the day, I haven't been able to see live wrestling with the exception of WrestleMania in the last fucking calendar year. I would just like to interject and point out how I am the intergender North Carolina champion of your right, mom's O-Dunk fucking wrestling company. That's fine. You can be the intergender champion. That's fine. I'm going to talk. I look at it from this standpoint. I love the fact that Eddie Kingston is trying his best to get the guys behind him ready to go. And, like, that's the thing. And the fact that Eddie's been a guy top to bottom, Eddie does Eddie things, and I love Eddie for that. Bully Ray, I love the fact that you're trying to do, I'm not going to say the right thing, but you're doing something that a lot of people don't do, and that's look out for someone that you're friends with. There's a lot of people that turn their back on you once you get signed or once you decide to do something else. Oh, yeah. do... So the fact that Bully is trying his best to, to tell Eddie, stay your lane, because what happens if tomorrow something happens and, you know, oh, Tony Khan's fucking going to jail for embezzlement or something like that. And now the only major company is WWE and Eddie burned that bridge by cutting a promo in Jacksonville before, after a show. Like at the end of the day, I think Bully is just telling Eddie, like, tone it down. Do your stuff. Worry about getting yourself over and fly the flag of your company because you don't want to burn all the bridges to the ground. Right. There's a reason why Tessa Blanchard hasn't been seen on North American television since what happened with Impact. Right. Because every fucking bridge is fucking engulfed in flames. But do you think do you think that in order to rev up the team, like you're saying, in order to get the guys in the back to be like, yo, let's go out, let's be the fucking number one wrestling company, and I'm going to tell you, I know you say, and, and I know it's a joke with us, but it's also sort of true that Ernest is the biggest AEW mark. Give me AEW over WWE right now. I will. I can't say that I tune in all that religiously to anything WWE, but I watch Dynamite every week, and I've even started watching Elevation, and if Dark wasn't two and a half hours and 17 matches, I'd probably at least consider it. So... Like, I'm loving AEW right now, personally. But my question is, like, why couldn't the, like, why couldn't the war call, why couldn't the rev up the team speech be, let's go out and be the fucking best because we are, as opposed to, let's go out and be the fucking best because fuck WWE? Because I don't think that's the way that Eddie Kingston's characteristically built. Okay. I think that was, I think that was Eddie speaking from the heart. And I think that was Eddie trying to, like, also, like, you had to remember, they've been in front of that Jacksonville crowd now for a year and a half. And 15, they months, yep. back. 15 months, in fact, yeah. They probably won't go back to Jacksonville for a long time after this. Well, they're going back in, like, a month, apparently. Like, August. Look. It's probably okay. part of the tour. I haven't seen the dates yet, but it's probably yeah, part of the tour. Yeah, look it up. They're, they're doing, like, one show, like, the first week of August in Jacksonville, and then, like, who knows? Maybe they just couldn't find arena for that week or something like that. It is well, random. It also might be no. You know what? They might be doing it in Jacksonville because of what happened with the University of Boston. But what happened with the University of Boston? They moved the date for the show in Boston back a couple of weeks. Okay. No, back back like th two months because the University of Boston is making sure that all of their kid, uh, all the students are vaccinated, and they're using the arena as a oh. vaccination site. So, and that week is the same week that AEW was supposed to be there. That makes sense. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, we can't. We got to go somewhere and they can always so go to Dilly's place easy, because they own it. It's easy. It's free. Yeah. You know. Daddy, Daddy um, owns Daly's place. Like, that's an easy one. Right. I, all I'll say is when it comes to the situation, the one thing that I, I'll always fall back on is Eddie speaks from the heart. He's yeah, done it in I every promo you. that he's ever cut. Um, and I think that Eddie also is riling up the fan base because you got to remember, there's a lot of people in that fan base that probably hate WWE. What's the easiest way to get a cheer, a loud ovation? Fuck those guys. But I guess fuck them. Yeah. But I guess that's part of my issue with it, though, because like as many people, especially wrestlers, especially people in the industry that go on Twitter and go on social media and say, "Hey guys." Can you stop being like, oh, fuck it, AEW, I'm a WWE fan, or oh, fuck WWE, I'm an AEW fan.
can you stop doing that and just be a wrestling fan and watch it because you enjoy it and want everyone to succeed? As many people do that on social media to then go on their show and in front of their live crowd and be like, nah, but really guys, fuck WWE. Like it just, it, I don't know. Like the messaging is just so off to me. I would, I would feel, I would feel worse if it was one of the people that's actually going on Twitter saying that. That was also going true. Right, right. I not feel like that. you're correct. It's like whoever's doing the delivery of the message. Like if it's Kenny Omega, some fucking like dork on that roster doing maybe one thing. Eddie Kingston's an no, voice. no. Let's 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 be real here. If Cody Rhodes goes on Twitter tomorrow and says, "Guys, stop bashing WWE. Let fans be fans," and then. When we go on Wednesday night, a random member of the fucking roster at the end of the night goes, fuck those guys. I'm going to be more like, hey, that's on Cody for being the executive vice president and not fucking keeping his fucking people intact. Right. Like, if it's Omega coming out and saying, you know, fuck WWE, then everyone's got free game to say it. If Kenny's going out on Twitter tomorrow and being like, guys, let, let Stanford be Stanford. Let Jacksonville be Jacksonville. Whoever wants to watch both, cool. I don't give a shit. Let everybody have fun. Like, fine. The, none of your people can come out No, but that's an interesting point because you're right. Like, you, you can't have Cody going out there and destroying a throne with a fucking sledgehammer and then get mad at Eddie Kingston for being like, fuck WWE. You can't because you're right. The executive vice president have both of ways. the company has already said it. You're can't right. No, you're 100% right. That's the, right. that's the thing. It's like, I, I think Bully's advice coming from him from the heart of just trying to get Eddie to hype up AEW is because I think Bully wants AEW to succeed the same way he wants WWE to succeed. Yeah. I just think he wants Eddie to go about it the way where it's like, let them shoot the fire. Like, let 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 the executive vice president and let let whoever on NXT or, or WWE, right. you know, be, be petty. Like, you're a face. You're the third or fourth most over face in the company right now. You don't need the cheap cheer. Like, right. get the cheer because you're, right. you're, you're leaving the show AEW, AEW. It's, right. like, it's, kind of it's kind of the thing that, that, that I fall back to. And, and I, again, we don't talk about Chikara because of what happened with Chikara. Right. But Eddie Kingston, the promo after he won... The, the camp the, the the grand championship yeah yeah where he was like i will die for this company i will bleed for this company if you think you're going to come into this company and, and not have to face me you've lost your mind you know and he ends up with, with making everyone chant chikara like do the same thing with AEW. yeah right i agree I don't agree. leave it fuck wwe leave it as this is this is my home this is where i want to be this is where i bleed this is where my we're, yeah. that's we're gonna, what fully ray is saying because you're yeah, right, fine. because like he fine. wasn't out there as grand champion being like, yo, guys, but for real, fuck Ring of Honor. Like, this is where real independent wrestling is or some shit like that. He was out there just being like, this is my company, and if you want your shot, come on in, but just know <clears throat> you're fucking with me when you come in. You're absolutely right. That's, there's, that's a valid point. All right, speaking of Can AEW. Can I just say, b- b- before we move but, to the next topic, but, just real quick closing. The tag match on last night's Dynamite with Kingston and Penta against the Young Bucks, fucking awesome, Gotta fucking awesome match. Watch totally tomorrow. worth going out of your way to see. All right, all right. Speaking of AEW, let's close it up. With Mike, Mike is gonna reminisce on day place. Leave the memories alone. All right, guys, we talked about it just now a little bit. Uh, AEW is leaving Daily's place. The final Dynamite, at least for the next couple weeks. Residency. Um, and I think, like, again, I don't know how much they're going to be dying to go back to the Jacksonville market with the exception of a spot show here or there because scheduling conflicts or something like that. Like, I don't think we're going to get a real mainstay in Jacksonville for the foreseeable future. Do you think they've burnt out that market? No, I just think they want to expand. They want to get the fans. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, I think you could, they could put it in Jacksonville and they'll have people fly there. Well, they'll have fans show up from... Yeah, I South agree Carolina, with you. North Carolina, yeah. Georgia, Mississippi. Don't matter. 
They've, yeah, they, they haven't done anything to quote unquote kill the territory or anything like no, that. No, the, the, the only thing, and, and this is them from a, from a standpoint in general, is the letting it breathe portion that we've talked about right. a couple of times. They've rushed some things, but nothing to really burn out the crowd. They're not putting up two and three shows a, a, a week, and they're not, they're not trying to run 45 house shows the same in the same building every week. They're, they're, they're being strategic about it, and I think that's the thing that the, that's why they haven't burned out the Jacksonville market yet. Um, but with that being said, Daly's Place is coming to an end, with the exception, of course, of that show that we've mentioned. Um, I want to talk about the good things, the bad things. Um, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention the sad things uh, about Daly's Place. Um, so it's one of those things where I just wanted to use this as, like, talk about matches and, and things that once AEW goes back on the road, like, you know, like, oh, yeah, I remember that time that, you know, this happened at Daly's Place, and, you know, it, it helped it helped us get through the pandemic, and you know, the video package that they that they played at the end of Dynamite, I watched it on social media. I didn't watch Dynamite yet, but I, I watched it on social media and it was a really good video package of like different things from, you know, the fucking Mimosa match to Blood and Guts to Stadium Stampede 1 and 2 to uh, Miro winning the TNT title to... You know, arguably one of the greatest AEW world title matches that will never get talked about in John Moxley versus Mr. Brody Lee. Um, you know, it's stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's one of those where, and, you know, I'll start and I'll let you guys go. I think the biggest takeaway I have from all of this is the fact that, you know, they're going to go back on the road and we're not going to get Brody with the Dark Order. And to know that we didn't get that on a national level, like with fans in the stands and, yeah. You know, people to support it and to to enjoy what he was doing. Um, the short feud with Cody before everything happened and we we lost him. Um, the dog collar match, the him winning the title and then destroying it and pouring it over Cody's fucking lifeless body after he jumped him and and all that. Like the the things that they did with that storyline. Um, that unfortunately, you know, was the last we saw of Brody. Um, and I think that's the thing. It's the good times, the the blood and guts, the stadium stampedes, the 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 good matches, the Moxley Omegas, you know, it, it's it's you got to remember the, the the point that 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 show building in Jacksonville got probably one of the best, if not the best, Cody Rhodes feud of the last mm-hmm. five years, and it led us it led us behind the curtain. Of a of a Wyatt family member, a bludgeon brother, whatever the fuck you wanted to call him, um, you know, we, me and Joe got to watch a lot of Luke Brody, whatever the fuck you want to call him, when he was in Chikara and, and and all that stuff, and then when he came to WWE and going to WrestleMania and all that, and you know, it's one of those things where I that bro that Brody was was special, and like it sucks, and I'm gonna miss, but it's like it's nice to know that I can go back and watch that just mm-hmm. that little quadrant of life, but it all happened in that building. I have yeah. I have the uh, Claudio Steel Cage match on DVD that we're gonna have to make Ernest watch very soon. Yeah, um, you just took words in my mouth because it, it was everything about Brody Lee, like the happiness and the sadness at the same time. Happiness of him debuting, you know, and the, obviously the, uh, the the episode that was dedicated to him, the memorial episode, is one of the best episodes of Dynamite, yeah. hands down. Hands mm-hmm. down. I, 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 to me, the, this era feels kind of like bittersweet because I feel like a lot of things we could have had. Like, if Brody's with us, first off, that Cody feud with Brody, you know, obviously ended too soon for obvious reasons. That was, I mean, that was my, my number two feud of the year last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like we were robbed, obviously, of that. So this whole era for me is just bittersweet in general. Like, I, to me, when I think of this era, I think of. You know, obviously Matt Hardy debuted also to whatever, it's cool. But to me, it's about Brody. <laughs> to me, I, that's the only person that comes to my mind I think about the quarantine era. Brody Lee debuting, you know, fixing the Dark Order, which on this show, we said for over a year ago that, what the fuck's Dark Order? What are they doing? Joe hated right. it for a long time. And yeah. now they had a direction. And Brody yes. fixed that. He won the TNT Championship and the dog collar match and all that. To me, it's all epitomizing the Brody, honestly, this whole entire era. I'll- I'll say this much on the Brody standpoint. If that didn't happen, the Dark Order would have had the world title by now. 
Yes, I agree with I, you. I think it's very possible. Absolutely. I agree. And I and I think that's the thing that sucks more than anything else is like we got him as like a secondary title champion, and that made that title almost as important as the world title when the ex WWE guy had the fucking world title. You know, this guy came in, made a fucking impact, fucking kicked somebody's head off, went out, beat Cody Rose, who was Mr. Unstoppable, in like seven minutes, and it's like destroyed him and Mm -hmm. should have been the guy. And it's like, it sucks knowing that like we didn't get the next level of the Dark Order because of what happened. And I know that's very, very, very like wrong of me for being upset about that. Because, it's not though. But but it's like a uh, wife lost her husband, kids lost their father. Like I'm upset about a wrestling angle. And I know people are going to be like, oh, you know, but you know, friends lost lost a friend and stuff like that. It's one of those things where it's like, I but, I didn't get to know the guy outside, so seeing that character and the 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 fun that he was having, yeah. As as Mr. But, Brody Lee and the stuff on being the elite that was like next level, like that's the stuff where it's like but you honestly, could tell he was having fun. I don't feel like it takes away at all from appreciating that like a wife lost her husband or appreciating that kids lost their father or friends lost their close friend by saying that you as a fan of his lost someone that you were a fan of. I don't think it takes away from that. If anything, I think it even adds more to Brody Lee's legacy because it goes to show you how, yes, he's obviously super missed and more so by the people that were close to him in life than anybody else. But the fact that someone who never met him, who only ever watched him on DVDs and occasionally in person in front of like a 250 people crowd and occasionally at WrestleMania and then occasionally on AEW and stuff like that can still sit here and be like, that guy was fucking awesome and I'm sad that he's gone. That just adds to his legacy. That 100% just makes him more of who he was. And all of his family and all of his friends and all of these people who knew how much he loved pro wrestling. Like, look, his kid is still involved with AEW for a reason. Brody, I love, Lee I love the loved fact that pro they, wrestling. I love the fact that every commercial or every interview that they've had over the last, like, five months, it's been like, oh, so this guy got released from WWE. Is he going to come in and be the new uh, leader of the Dark Order? And right. everybody's the same. Nope. Right. Negative ones. We leader. have a leader. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't, yes. we don't need. We don't need. Yeah, cool. Alistair Black. Cool. Right. Let him go kick somebody. Then, the and they're over. And now they're but, over. But like, they're like. Crazy. But no, I, I. But even more so than them being over, what Mike is saying, I agree with. They have literally said, we have a leader. It's Brody. He might not be here, but he's here. We have a leader, and there's no replacing him. There's no need to replace him. He's still no, our leader. He, if you need someone to come in and be the leader, you have negative one come in and hit people with a kendo stick. Exactly. Let the, kid, let the kid be the leader. Exactly. So I'll say for my eight, for my memories of the COVID era dynamite, first of all, I think it's interesting because I think that AEW was delivering more than WWE was during this era. And I, I think they needed to, because at the end of the day, the truth is WWE could almost pretend all of this never existed if they wanted to. They have 30, 40, 50 years worth of archival footage of their company. If they want to put together a a clip video of WrestleMania to hype you up for WrestleMania next year, they don't have to touch a single clip from WrestleMania 36. They don't. Nope. They have 35 years prior to that and a year after it full of live crowd shots, full of people with the title raised, with the audience behind them, people shocked that The Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar, all of that stuff. You have all of that if you're WWE. If you're AEW and you want to put together a hype video for All Out, 
you're probably including shit from the year where there was no crowd because otherwise you've only got two shows to choose from. AEW hasn't been around long enough to be able to have the the good luck to ignore a year that was totally different from what you expected it to be. They just Mm -hmm. don't. I think at the end of the day, WWE is going to end up kind of brushing under the rug a lot of the stuff from the pandemic era. I don't think that they're going to use the money in the bank that ended up on the roof as a hype thing for the next money in the bank. I think they're going to use footage of all the money in banks that we've gotten before that in front of live crowds. The, the only thing that I could see them using from the pandemic era for the money in the bank thing would be like Oscar getting the belt because Becky announced that she was pregnant. Right. Or maybe like Mrs. Like Cash that. in or something yes. like that. So right. Those are the only two things that I could, I couldn't see like, them showing like Otis fucking climbing a ladder to, to grab the briefcase. Like I don't right. see that as being part of the right. Like look, if you're if you're putting together a video to show off people winning the WWE world title, Drew McIntyre in front of the world's largest sailing fan isn't the most impressive image. And you have 36 years worth of shows full of other champions winning the title, holding it over their head. And there's 70,000 people in front of them. Or this past year, it's like 25,000 people in front of them. Still a lot more impressive. So I think that AEW is in a different position because they have to actually still acknowledge all of this. They have to still use a lot of this footage. And I think they Mm -hmm. knew that the whole time because they've delivered. They've given us a lot of stuff. And for me, I think my biggest remembrance from this era is probably going to be the chances that they've taken. Because there's a lot of matches that they did that they never would have done otherwise. Stadium Stampede would have never existed. The Mimosa match would have never existed. There's a lot of stuff that they would not have been willing to try in front of a live crowd. That when there's no live crowd and you have a chance to like, yeah, maybe it gets shit on in front of Twitter afterwards or something like that. But then you take it back. You're like, all right, we shouldn't have done that. We're not going to do it again. This is almost like a really good year test run for AEW. So they can kind of figure out what they're comfortable with, what they feel like works and doesn't work. You know what? I won't be surprised to see in like at some point in history in AEW, a mimosa match in front of a live crowd. Because now they know it'll work. Now they know that they can get it over. Now they know that like the crowd that watched it at home on pay-per-view didn't hate it. So now, you know what? You want to break it out on an episode of Dynamite randomly and make it the main event? Nobody's going to be mad at that. But they wouldn't have done that as, as they wouldn't have taken that chance, I don't think, as in front of a live crowd, having never done that match before. But you've done it. You've worked it out. You've worked out the kinks. Now, why not? Stadium Stampede's a whole other thing because obviously you can't have a crowd for that. I don't think we're going to see that anymore. I think we've seen the last of that. But would I be shocked if they break that out in an episode of Dynamite? No, not necessarily. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying I don't think I don't I, I don't think I think you won't see it for a while. But I don't think never never is a, a strong word. I think that's right. You have a shot of seeing it. Maybe a while, but I think you have a shot. Um, right. Some positives. Some positives. Now that I started this with a somber note, um, let's let's talk about the year of the Hangman. This yeah. year, and, and Jacksonville being the place where that guy went from, like, a tag champion throw-in piece with Kenny Omega. Like, Ernest didn't know Adam Page from his time in Ring of Honor. Like, me and you did. Right. A lot of wrestling fans did. This was the coming out party for Adam Hangman Page for a lot of people. Yeah, um, if, if you – but no, I'm sorry. Even knowing him from Ring of Honor, if you told me that he was going to be the number one star in a national – on TV every week I, in primetime company. I don't know that I would have bought it. I, I could have I could have saw it, but I would have said his gimmick would have had to change completely and he'd have to change things that he was doing. I could have right. bought into it with the right lead. Yeah. Like, what he was doing in Ring of Honor, no. If he was doing that same thing, I'd have been like, all right, dude, I need my money back. You just wasted, like, 45 minutes of my time. I can say one thing, though, about Paige. On this week's Dynamite, when they threw him the two beers, I don't need that. I don't need... You're over. You're the number one star in this company. You're the fucking man. You don't need to do someone else's gimmick. 
You don't. You have your own, and it's amazing, and you're fantastic. Cowboy shit. Give me cowboy shit. Don't give me Austin shit. Give me cowboy shit. <clears throat> All right. Joe. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. Huh? There you are. You were cutting, cutting out. out oh, sorry. I'd be, like, I'd be I'd be more impressed if he was like, hand me my flask and I'll take a shot. Then give me two right. beers and let me like chug Next them. Steve That's Austin, been right. done. Right. Like I don't like when, when Owens is out there doing the fucking stunner that much either, personally. Yeah, me too. So I don't I don't need Hangman Page doing the Austin beers gimmick thing. Do your own thing. You're over. Do your own fucking thing. That's why you're over. Do your own thing. So, Joe, what do you love this oh. week? Ooh, well, what? Oh, you're, already, you're already wrapping this up? What the fuck are you doing? No, you, I, I, I thought you done. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we talked. About, I talked about the sad part. I talked about the good part. I want to I mention some of the bad part. I mean, oh, got to remember Daily Switch for what it was. I mean, the fact that we rushed to blood and guts for some fucking reason. That was the first match of the pinnacle versus... Fucking... Yeah, that shit. I wonder stupid. if they did that though, because it would be easier to do that at Daily yes. Place. Same reason yeah. why we think Hell in a Cell already happened too, instead of in October. Facts. Because yeah. often now, get out of the way. I'm sorry. Um, my memories when I'm thinking about the worst things that happen at Daily's Place, that fucking Matt Hardy, Chris Jericho promo, where like Matt Hardy was like all of a sudden in different parts of the crowd and shit. Mm-hmm. I hated how about, that. How about? How about Sammy Guevara leaving half of his skull on the concrete floor inside Oof. fucking PIAA yes. Stadium and then finishing Oof. the match? Can we agree that Matt Hardy has not been the greatest thing in AEW as no. a whole? He's been great as a manager. Like five as a Although I like this gimmick he has now. I don't. You don't like it? I don't hate it. I hate. It. I, I love the fact that he's not in the ring as much. So right. give him the microphone. Let him talk for Butcher and the Blade. Let him talk for Private Party. Neither, right. neither of those fucking peeps have got a promo. I'm cool with it. I don't care. It keeps yeah, him out it, of the fucking ring. Except, except at the pay per view, it's gonna be Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage because, of course, the fucking is. Well, Christian needs to get a win. Outwork everyone, bud. Yep. There you go. The guys, the guys, the most overact of to come in and doesn't get a title shot, but Andrade comes out on his second night and says, "I deserve this, 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 and this." Okay, bud. Thank whatever you, you say, bud. Stupid. Um, <laughs> things I didn't like. Number one. This is the one that I'm going to go back to, and this is what I. This is how I feel. AEW should have waited on one thing specifically that they should have put in California. They should have broken up SCU in California. Yes, I agree. They should have had Kazarian and Daniels lose to the Bucks somewhere in California. You know what? Book the bingo hall. Put them in Reseda in, in the middle of PWG territory. Fill that bitch up. And let SCU lose there. Like let them let let it end in Southern California. Right. Like that's something like all, that I will say. Like we all know Jacksonville was the worst city they had ever been in, but still it should have been over in California. So like that's one that I that I hang my hat on. Um this working arrangement, not working arrangement with impact that they're doing. I'm good with it. Like they're leaving Jacksonville, I don't need any I don't, yeah. need them on, I don't need them on Impact anymore. I don't need anybody from Impact on fucking AEW. Let's just fucking move on. I get the fucking title. Get the fucking title off of him. Stop letting Don Callis wear the AAA title of the ring. Stop letting fucking Carl Anderson wear the AEW world title. The fucker will never hold it. Fucking Don Gallo's wearing the TN, TNA title. Like, what Like what are we doing, guys? Come on. Like, All I, right. I get it. Like, we'll book oh, this shit. We, shouldn't, we shouldn't let anyone else wear the titles. Like, but here's the thing. If you're AEW, there's no way that I'm letting fucking Carl Anderson wear the AEW world title. Yeah, for real. If yeah. if 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 Kenny wants to wear the Impact title and come out holding the AEW title, fine. Let fucking Carl Anderson wear the AAA title and let Don Callis just sit there and fucking cut a promo and fucking not have to wear a title belt. Like this is just stupid. Yeah. It, it, it goes into his character being kind of shitty. I just don't like his character. I'm being honest. Like, how are you the belt collector, but then you treat them like props? This is the whole problem with title belts in right. pro wrestling. Like, yeah, like either, you like, either you're like, you're excited to be holding these belts, and then you're the fucking Ultimo Dragon, or you're not. titles all over you, or well, you're just like, I win them because I can, and 
fuck them. I don't actually care about them that there's, much. Here, Doc Gallows, you hold them. There's two type of title collectors in the world, okay? There's Ultima Guerrero. Ultima Dragon. Him too. Ultima, Ultima Breakfast. I think Ultimo Guerrero only won like two or three titles. For the okay, record. and the second is Tetsuya Naito, who just destroys every title belt that he ever fucking wins. Those are the only two belt collectors in the world. So you're either Ultimo Dragon or even, Tetsuya Naito. Even Naito actually carried the belt himself. He wasn't fucking like, hey, Bushi, hold this shit for me. Well, it's because he got to throw them from the fucking entrance stage. Kenny threw like three of them before he got to the ring. At least it would be cool. Right. Guy's a guy's a joke. Get him off my screen. <laughs> All right. On that note, Joe, what do you love this week? I'll make it. I'll keep this really fast because I could see Ernest is tired. Uh, Andrade, Charlotte, you out there in the gym? You are wearing your AEW hat, your WWE hat? You fucking you proven that Eddie Kingston shouldn't be out there being like fuck WWE? Because the truth is, AEW and WWE can fuck each other, and I love that for you. <laughs> Dude, you're fucking insane. Alright, MVPs, guys. You know what's Mike? really sad? I what's came that? up with that when you started to transition into it, when Mike was like, yo, fuck you, I'm not done yet. I yeah. had nothing until that point. I, I sat know. here while Mike was talking, thinking about it. I didn't have you're anything either. I, I actually... I haven't watched wrestling this week. Like any. Oh, I have my MVP because I've watched wrestling this week. Okay, who's MVP? Well, I'll go Matt first. Riddle, because he was the star of Monday Night Raw this week, and he's entertaining as shit, and he can go in the ring. They have a Kurt Angle level talent on their hand in terms of someone who can go in the ring and then also be a character that's entertaining that you actually want to see. And he was on all over Raw. He was the star of the show, and he showed why he deserves to be one of the stars of the show. Yeah, he was. He got a lot of pop on on the internet on Monday. Deservedly, I think once they're back in front of live crowds, Matt Riddle's going to be gigantic. I don't know if I. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I think he'll be world champion by the end of the year. But do I think that he could be challenging Lashley by the end of the year? Totally. Definitely cross Vince's mind. Uh, my MVP is simple. Uh. The New Day, winning tag team, uh, number one tag team spot. You know, I have much this week to work with. So, my my LVP, my least valuable player is Ernest for coming Why? up with the worst MVP humanly possible. That was what yeah. the fuck. Hey, deal with it, motherfucker. <laughs> I love See you in two weeks, buddy. Mike. Uh, all right, I got I got a couple of MVPs this week. Uh, number one, uh, the newlyweds of. Uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, congratulations. Yes. Ah, that's right. Congrats. Uh, I don't nine. find Seth Rollins that hot, so I'm really okay with this. Unless he was wearing white, or was that the kid next to us? That was the kid him? next to me. I found him hot. I thought the guy sitting next to me at that SummerSlam was really hot. Like, I'd have hit that shit. But, Absolutely. like, he was all into Seth Rollins, so I was like, oh, yeah, Seth Rollins. Ha, 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 ha. Meet me in the bathroom. I said math room. I really did. You did. You really did. You're tired. I I went to Ben's bathroom, and I went with math room. I don't know. I'm tired. You're tired. Um, Second second MVP this week. Um, I've got to give it up to the new North American champion, Isaiah Swerve. Scott. Yes. Uh, And my final MVP for this week, uh, Ernest, you'll love this one. Uh, My third MVP this week is... (laughs) No, it's Bobby Bonilla. For fucking waking <laughs> the New York Mets out of one point five million dollars for another fucking year. Happy Bobby, 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 Bobby Bonilla, everyone. Fourteen more uh, to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But before we before we wrap this up, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna break the news. Uh, our next show will be the halfway point uh, award show of the Take Three Wrestling Podcast. Here's 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 the award. Yes, it is my Roku remote. Don't give that Roku. away. How are you gonna change the channel? Amazon dog. Fucking <laughs> buy more. Uh, fair. Um, so next week's show uh, will be the award show. Um, or are we waiting two weeks because of next week being elimination? Cha- or no? Do we have enough time to get the award show ready to go? Yeah, oh, they well, I mean, we're gonna do it on like Sunday night or something. Like we're getting well, we it have, in the can early this week. We have the award show, which we could actually do for next Thursday, and then the following Thursday would be the preview for Money yes. in the Bank while we're commuting from Maine to yeah. But I mean, honestly, 
to be fair, we should be able to do that one at our normal time because we'll probably be in a hotel room, you and I. That's what I was. That's what I was. Thinking. And, and I mean I'll... that in the least homosexual way possible. I promise, Carol. But we'll probably be in a hotel room at that point. Like, By 10, 30, there's no 11, reason why we I'm, can't do this. Because if I'm flying up at seven o'clock in the morning, yeah, I know. Ten hours. That's why my even if yeah, I make it ten hours, and that that's like nine o'clock by the time. That's why my aunts were asking. That's why they were like, "What time does he want to fly?" Because like, doesn't he have to drive then? I was just like, "I'll ask him." Yes, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as always. As always, award do. show. And then I'm breaking this out to you guys on the award show. We're changing up the MVP format. We're doing something different. It's going to be the way that we determine who our wrestlers of the year are. I guess the question really is, are we going to do the halftime show the same way we did it with the end of the year show? Or are we going to... Oh, that's cute. You think I remember. You know you know, it's even cuter? The fact that you're not going to cut this off of either the audio or the visual portion nope. of our show. And nope. we're fucking running about 35 minutes too long. So at nope. the end of the day, let's have this conversation in something that we like to call a group chat. So until next week, guys, that's Ernest. He's an idiot. That's Joe. He's cool. I'm Mike, the guy who's going to tell Ernest that he fat, gay, the fuck dumb. I am. Cool. Did you say fat, gay, and dumb? Yeah. I'm fat. You're gay. You're gay He's dumb. dumb. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay, you see? <laughs> I'll allow it. We're like the new day. All right. Wait, hold on, on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm stopping which recording. Way, which member of the new day is, is Ernest? I'm Big E, motherfucker. What? I'm Big what? E, motherfucker. Well, what? I mean, he is big. He is big. I'd call you like the Kofi Kingston of the group. Like, you're the one who's going to be like, jumping around doing parkour shit. I, I and I'm the gamer. I don't, I don't know how my chest feels about you calling me the Kofi Kingston of the group. I'm just putting that well, out there. You, you also haven't gotten kicked in the chest 700 times. Yo, for real. <laughs> okay, boxer. All right. Stop recording now. <laughs>